Hello, my name is Jody Ide, and I am the high school social studies content specialist. And I would like you to welcome, I would like to welcome you to this Canyons U bite-sized PD. It's not all about the lecture, incorporating historical thinking skills into your classroom. I'd like you to look at our professional development norms. Maybe you could pick one that you would like to focus on for this particular PD today. Everything we do in Canyon School District is based on our MTSS framework. So this is just a reminder that this is our Canyon School District MTSS framework. I'm sure that you have seen this before. And this is just a reminder. All right, on to our learning intentions and success criteria for today. Our learning intentions for today are to learn or review the historical thinking skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, and close reading, and to understand the vital role that educators play in teaching these skills and the role they play in understanding information. Our success criteria is to practice the skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, and close reading, and to incorporate historical thinking skills into our teaching more frequently. Our agenda is to review historical thinking skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, and close reading, to discuss the significance of misinformation and the future of American democracy to practice the above historical thinking skills and to think of ways to apply historical thinking into your curriculum. Um, I kind of wanted to take a moment and talk about the importance of historical thinking skills. As I've talked to um, teachers, a lot of teachers have felt that the last couple of years as a result of COVID and, and not knowing if we are gonna be in person or pivoting to online or a hybrid, um, option of, of teaching, it has forced teachers to, to lecture more um, with the need to, to post, be posting online onto Canvas a lot. It's sort of forced teachers to maybe be lecturing a little bit more, doing more um, presentations and near pods, and so more of a heavy reliance on lectures. And so there's been more of a need for engagement in the classroom. And of course, we all know that there's misinformation out there prevalent everywhere. And um, there's, there was a quote that I read recently that, that one of the greatest threats to our American democracy is the spread of misinformation. And so as, as educators in general, but especially social studies teachers, I think it's really important that we teach our students um, the skills necessary for them to understand um, how to identify misinformation and how to combat misinformation and how necessary that will be to, to the success of our democracy. I really like this quote um, by Julia Kohler. This was from the Pew Research Center. She said, information is only as reliable as the people who are receiving it. If readers do not change or improve their ability to seek out and identify reliable information sources, the information environment will not improve it. So let me read that again. Information is only as reliable as the people who are receiving it. If readers do not change or improve their ability to seek out and identify reliable information sources, the information environment will not improve. So as educators, as social studies teachers, we need to help our students improve their ability to seek out and identify reliable information sources. And that, I think, comes from helping them have historical thinking skills. And of course, we can do that in our classrooms. So a great way to start is through historical thinking skills of sourcing, contextualization, cooperation, and close reading. And these sources can really be utilized as a companion to lectures. It can be something that we can infuse into our lectures, into our classrooms, and it can really make 
um, our classrooms more engaging. So let's start with sourcing. So we really need to help students before they read a document to ask themselves, who wrote this? What is the author's perspective? Why was it written? When was it written? Where was it written? Is it reliable? Why or why not? Now, of course, all of this comes from Shegg. And um, there's these really great posters that, that we can have printed for you. And, and Shegg, of course, is the Stanford History Education Group. And so here's an example of, of a poster that you could have in, in your classroom that, that could help students remember sourcing, okay? Next, contextualization. Contextualization asks students to locate a document in time and place and to understand how these factors shape its content. When and where was the document created? So what was different then? What was the same? How might the circumstances in which the document was created affect its content? Okay, and here's a poster that highlights contextualization that we could have printed for you and you could have in your classroom that could help students remember contextualization. Next, corroboration. This asks students to consider details across multiple sources to determine points of agreement and disagreement. So what do other documents say? Do the documents agree? If not, why? What are other possible documents? And what documents are most reliable? And here's another poster that you could put up in your classroom to help teach this skill. And the last one that we are going to talk about today is close reading. Close reading as a historical thinking skill helps students evaluate sources and analyze rhetoric by asking them, what claims does the author make? What evidence does the author use? What language, words, phrases, images, symbols does the author use to persuade the document's audience? And how does the document's language indicate the author's perspective? And here's that poster. So again, you can order all of these posters as a set, just email me. You can have them made at the district and we'll have them sent out to you. Because if you have them hanging up in your classroom, you'll remember to be teaching these skills. And of course the kids can reference them. So let's practice this. So adding historical thinking skills to your instruction, let's take a world history standard. Let's take standard 4.2. Students will develop an interpretation of how ideas embodied in movements such as the Renaissance, religious reformation, scientific revolution, and the enlightenment led to a changing balance of world power. So let me give you a prompt. Let's evaluate whether or not the Catholic church in the 1600s was opposed to new ideas in science. Now you could take this prompt and you could give students some primary documents and they could evaluate those primary documents using those four historical thinking skills. Individually, they could do it in partners, in groups. You could have them do them individually in partners or groups and then come back for a whole class and discussion. They could then write a little paragraph depending on how many documents you give them, they could go on and write a little DBQ essay, right? There's a lot of things that you can do, but you're providing kids with an opportunity to really use historical thinking skills, really develop um, depth of knowledge level thinking, and really providing them with um, engagement opportunities with each other and with you. Now. In this bite-sized PD, I'm, I'm the only one here. And so we really aren't gonna have an opportunity to look at these documents and discuss them together. So I have to be a little creative on how I do this. So I'm gonna to go to this historical thinking chart and talk about this for a second before we look at the documents. This would be a great um, document to print and have each student in your history or any social studies class that uses primary documents, I guess, really 
have kind of in a binder or something that they pull out. Um, it has these four historical thinking skills, sourcing, contextualization, cooperation, and close reading. It has those questions that we went over in the first column there. And then it says what students should be able to do. So let's just pick one. Let's look at cooperation. So let's remind ourselves the questions, okay? So find cooperation there on the left and let's review the questions. What do other documents say? Do the documents agree? If not, why? What are other possible documents and what documents are most reliable? So those are the questions that would be on the poster hanging in the room, right? And, and those are the questions that you want students really thinking about when they're looking at the documents. Now let's look at the middle column. Students should be able to establish what is probable by comparing documents to each other and recognize disparities between accounts. So as a teacher, that's, that's the learning intention there. Okay, and the success criteria, that's what you're going for. That's the teacher clarity part. And the prompts there, those are sentence frames for students when they are writing maybe the DBQ or the paragraph. So the author agrees or disagrees with. These documents all agree, disagree about. Another document to consider might be. And so this is a really great way to, one, in the first column, really help students guide the way they're looking at the documents. In the middle column, help you with your teacher clarity, your learning intention success criteria for your students. And then the prompts can become um, sentence frames for your students when they are writing as they're analyzing the documents and, and writing about the documents. So that's why I think it's a really great um, historical thinking chart for you to have to utilize with your students. So let's go back to our prompt. Evaluate whether or not the Catholic Church in the 1600s was opposed to new ideas in science. So, since it's just me and I'm, I'm modeling this and, and we can't really have a discussion since we don't have other teachers here, let's just pick one of, one of these two to model. So let's do sourcing. So the questions that we're gonna ask ourselves are, who wrote this? What is the author's perspective? When was it written? Where was it written? Why was it written? Is it reliable? Why or why not? So students should be able to identify the author's position on the historical event, identify and evaluate the author's purpose in producing the document, hypothesize what the author will say before reading the document, evaluate the source's trustworthiness by considering genre, audience, and purpose. So, Let's just go to, oh, I have four documents here. We can go to the first one. So this is just sourcing. So I'm just looking at the source. So the source is Paola Antonio Fascorini, who's a Catholic monk and scientist. And this is an excerpt from an epistle concerning the Pythagorean and Copernican opinion of the mobility of the earth and stability of the sun, 1615. So I'm gonna go back. So who wrote this? So this was written by a male Catholic monk and scientist. Okay. What is the author's perspective where well, we're going to need to, to read that? When was it written? 1615. Where was it written? 
we'll probably need to read that, but it probably is safe to assume that if it was a Catholic monk in 1615, probably maybe Italy, why was it written and is it reliable? So we'll need to go back and we're going to need to read it. So take some time to read it and then we'll be able to answer the other questions. Okay, so if we go back to our sourcing, the author's perspective we find out is that he supports the Copernican theory. Um, is it reliable, why or why not? We might say it's reliable because even though he's a, a monk from the Catholic church, he's also a scientist, which is really interesting. And it appears that he's supportive of the Copernican theory, which he says might contradict the Holy, Holy Scriptures. So he's, he, might appear to be kind of putting himself out there on the line a little bit. And so anyway, as you see, you can really delve in and start talking with your students. And then of course, as you move on further, the next one is Galileo, right? And then you can kind of start talking about Galileo and, and his position and then what happens with the church. The next one, of course, um, you know, we have a German Jesuit astronomer, um, and, and on and on. And it all goes back to, you know, go go back to our first question, whether or not the Catholic Church in the 1600s was opposed to new ideas in science. And so what, what you're doing is you're not just telling students, initially you might be telling students in a lecture, but then you're giving students primary documents and giving them historical thinking skills to, to really delve into these primary documents, to talk with each other, and then maybe in partners or groups or as a whole class and to practice the skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, and close reading to really get them to think about um, what was going on at that time, right? The contextualization, um, to corroborate the, the texts, um, to do close reading and to, to look at sourcing. And it, it really makes their learning um, deeper and, and richer. So again, since it's just me, I, I want you, if, if you had a chance to watch this on your own, um, I think what I'll do is, sorry, I'm probably making you sit going back and forth. What I'll do is I'm gonna stop. I'll move my little face out of each of these. So you can pause the screen and read each of these if you need to. So go ahead and pause and read. So you can read each of these. So here's the first one. So you could just pause and read. Here's the second one. So you could pause and read. Look at that one. Oh, this is the third one, I think. And here's the fourth one. So how can you use historical thinking skills more in your classroom? Maybe there's just one historical thinking skill you would like to begin with. 
Um, so which historical thinking skill could you add? You know, maybe starting with all four is too much. Maybe you just want to start with sourcing. But, but just start with one and, and go from there. I really think that it will add um, more engagement opportunities, and I really think that it will add more enrichment um, into your instruction. So going back to our learning intentions today, we wanted to learn or review the historical thinking skills of sourcing, contextualization, corroboration, and close reading. I wanted um, to go over the vital role that educators play in teaching these skills and the role they play in understanding misinformation. I really believe that as we teach historical thinking skills of sourcing, um, that can be applied to misinformation in, in the present day and that students will be able to combat misinformation more. And hopefully we've had a chance or you've had a chance from watching this to practice some of these skills. Um, I know it was on your own, but hopefully you had a little bit of a chance to, and I hope you will think about incorporating these historical thinking skills into your teaching more frequently. Thanks for coming. <laughs>